Hello, and welcome to this unit of our course, where we are going to talk about an organ which plays a crucial role in the development of the metabolic syndrome, the adipose tissue. Body fat, or adipose tissue, was once regarded as little more than a storage depot for fat, waiting passively to be used once energy is needed. But research has shown that fat cells are biologically active, the adipose tissue is distributed almost throughout the whole human body. Here, we see all the adipose tissue depositions. However, there are two major ones that are the visceral and subcutaneous adipose tissue. Visceral fat lays in the spaces between the abdominal organs. Subcutaneous fat is located between the skin and the outer abdominal wall. So, how can someone distinguish if the fat sits in visceral or subcutaneous adipose tissue? For me, that doesn't matter. Or does it? If you think of a person with a hard and protruding belly, also often called beer belly, this is mainly visceral fat. A soft belly is caused by subcutaneous fat. In general, accumulation of visceral fat has higher risk for health problems. Remember, Increased waist to hip ratio is a diagnosis criteria for the metabolic syndrome. All those yellowish depositions that we see here correspond to white adipose tissue. However, in the early 2000s, some publications indicated that human adults have another type of adipose tissue, which we now know is called brown adipose tissue. Active brown adipose tissue helps maintain normal body temperature in newborns. It is located in the neck region of a baby. Until 2003, it was believed that this tissue vanishes with age and is completely lost by the time a person reaches adulthood. However, in that year, it was discovered that this, this was not the case. In a study with cancer patients, tumor metabolism and metastasis were investigated. Tumors have a very active metabolism and consume a lot of glucose to fuel their energy need. To see where tumors are located, these patients were injected with 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, also shortly 18F FDG. Yeah, that's a form of sugar molecule, but in comparison to normal glucose, it lacks a side chain. Therefore, it can be taken up by the tissues, but not used for energy production. And in addition to that, it is labeled with a radioactive fluor. Thus, it can be detected in a positron emission tomography, also shortly called PET. Exactly. 18F FDG was used as a tracer in that study, and that glucose was followed up with PET scanning and computer tomography. It turned out that most of the scans also show high glucose uptake in the supraclavicular region. Therefore, other researchers did the following experiment. They put two groups of participants to different temperature, cold, which is 17 degrees Celsius, and normal temperature, because it is known that glucose consumption by tissues varies with temperature. And what they observed was that high glucose uptake in the supraclavicular region in all patients, but particularly in those that were exposed to the cold. This led to the final proof that this was brown adipose tissue, similar to that present in infant. Those subsequent studies were all published together in 2009. The reason why they detected it was because it is known that brown adipose tissue is activated at low temperatures and has a very high rate of consumption of glucose. To give you an idea, it is almost eight times higher than skeletal muscle. So now we can talk about the two types of cells making up those fat tissues the white and the brown adipocytes. Tell us, Ali, how do white adipocytes look like since this is your preferred home? That's right. White adipocytes have a large single and a very big lipid droplet that fill up almost the whole cell. There's a lot of storage room for me. The cells only produce energy to survive. Therefore, they have a low number of mitochondria. If you thought that the only reason for them to exist is to provide storage room for me, you are wrong. 
Later, you will hear about other functions of white adipocytes that are also very important for the development of the metabolic syndrome. Yeah, but for now, let's move on also to the brown adipocytes. They look a lot different than white adipocytes. They are characterized by having multiple lipid droplets and mitochondria, which express a protein called UCP1 or uncoupling protein 1. Their main function is to dissipate energy in the form of heat. In other words, I'm to be burned there. But who doesn't like it warm? Well, Ali, this last point makes brown fat very, very interesting when thinking about new strategies for the treatment of metabolic syndrome, since the brown adipose tissue is able to convert chemical energy, such as lipids or glucose, into heat. This type of adipocytes is then called beige or sometimes also bright adipocytes because it is somewhat in between the other two types. Beige adipocytes are located within the white adipose depots, but also contain multiple lipid droplets and more mitochondria than the white ones. Also, those adipocytes are able to produce heat. So we reached the end of this first video. Summing up, in this video we introduced the different types localization and functions of adipose tissue, including the white and brown adipose tissue. Additionally, we characterized white and brown adipocytes. And lastly, we introduced you to the importance of the so-called browning process as a potential therapeutic strategy to fight against the metabolic syndrome. But now let's move on to look into white adipose tissue a bit closer. <music>